Republican National Convention is entering its final day today, a conclusion to a week of cheers for the star of the show, Donald Trump. Trump's running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, took the stage yesterday walking out to an America First theme song, which set the tone for the message of his entire speech. Why don't we liberate these United States where the ones who need it work? Let the rest of the world help us for change and let's rebuild America first. Thank you. His speech featured an ode to working class Americans drawing on his own roots as a child of the American heartland. I started businesses to create jobs in the kind of places that I grew up in. Now my work taught me that there is still so much talent and grit in the American heartland. There really is. But for these places to thrive, my friends, we need a leader who fights for the people who built this country. We need a leader who's not in the pocket of big business, but answers to the working man, union and non-union alike. To the people of Middletown, Ohio, and all the forgotten communities in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Ohio, and every corner of our nation, I promise you this, I will be a vice president who never forgets where he came from. Looking ahead, here to tell us what we can expect to see today is GOP strategist Whitley Yates. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, yesterday was an amazing day. It was JD's fans, JD Vance's first time in being able to address this crowd as the VP pick and nominee, and his speech was amazing. And so tonight is the prime time special of Donald Trump addressing the crowd in the RNC and really just having his first public address since the atrocities that happened in Pennsylvania. So everyone is excited to hear his speech and to see what direction he's going to lead, not only the campaign, but the country. So yesterday was J.D. Vance's first day on the on the on the stage, just you know, speaking to um, to Republicans, explaining who he is, talking about his background. Um, why don't you tell our viewers what he emphasized in in his remarks and uh, and how that was received? You know, J.D. Vance is a very great storyteller, as we all know, and he really just talked about his journey. Not only his journey from very humble beginnings, but also his journey in his relationship with President Trump and the leadership in which President Trump is going to have. So he was a very great co-pilot, I would call it. When we looked at the speech, he had elements of his own personal journey, intertwined elements of the presidential journey, and also the hope for the future when it comes to a a Trump-Vance presidency. Now, Whitley, one part of the speech that really struck me was when J.D. Vance talked about what kind of administration they'd have when it comes to making policy. We didn't get a lot of policy promises or fixes to a lot of the problems he described that his family grew up with. But he did say that they would negotiate and that they would debate and they would determine what would be best for America. Is this a promise of some kind of bipartisanship, working with people across the political spectrum? What was the reception like of that specific sentiment? You know, I think that that was one of the greatest things that he could say, because as I've said before, what Trump really needs in a number two is someone who's going to be able to bring people together. We know Trump's leadership style and really looking at how J.D. can come and kind of be a force to bring people to the middle is very important. And so, you know, hearing those tinges, not only of bipartisanship, but people that are looking to move towards action and not get caught up on the problem, but really work towards solutions is what Americans are really wanting right now. Hmm. So there is rampant speculation again, once again, in the for coming from the mainstream media that Joe Biden might actually be persuaded to exit um, the race. We're hearing a lot of reporting to that regard. That regard, I remain skeptical. But has that uh, reality sunk in at the RNC? Are people now expecting that this race is going to be very different? It's going to be against perhaps Kamala Harris as the as the the chief opponent of the Trump Vance ticket. No one is necessarily worried about whether or not it's going to be Kamala or Biden, because I'm going to be honest, the sentiment around here is that Trump's going to win no matter what, that the Trump train is going to continue to go. And it doesn't matter who was at the top of the Democratic ticket. It just it won't matter at all because they are going to win. And when you talk to people from the different states, they don't actually seem to be worried about a Biden administration or Harris administration. 
Now, Whitley, tonight, looking forward, I think maybe we will get some of those policy promises from Trump because J.D. Vance's speech was very problem focused. I'm curious if you think we're going to expect some talk of what the agenda is if Trump gets in office in 2024 tonight. Is that what you're expecting coming out of Donald Trump's speech? Out the problems that America is facing. And I also think that you're going to hear about the transformation of a Trump administration. It's going to be what is America's life? What are Americans' lives going to be like under his administration? And what is going to be the difference from a Biden administration to a Trump? I don't think it's going to be heavy with policy points. Think of this as a giant pep rally to get all of his base and all of his supporters excited and engaged. So it's not going to be policy heavy. It's going to be people focused and how his administration is going to perpetuate change in their lives. Hmm. Willie Yates, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you.